Hello, Internet. I'm here with another video for In Addition to Make to Pet Game. Um, this time I thought I would add a little system for breeding pets uh, to let you select one pet, another pet, and breed some of their traits. Uh, right now, the pets don't have any traits, so in addition to, uh, you know, breeding, we're going to have to add traits that can even be bred. Um, so I figured I would do markings on the pet. That's, a, you know, I don't know, a pretty popular thing to do. Uh, so let's start with that. Let's start with the graphics. Um, I've got a tool called Inkscape. It is an open source thing. I say I have, I don't. It's just, <laughs> it's just an open source program. Um, it's really good for altering vector graphics. That's explicitly what it's for, SVGs. Um, and that is what I've done the graphic, this one pet, uh, with, is SVG. And the reason I like SVGs is partially because I suck at drawing. You can just, like, rearrange these things. So anytime you make a mistake, um, ooh, that's kind of a fun hairstyle, uh, <laughs> you can, right, easily adjust them. So I really like that. Um, and I'm going to now add some, I guess, some stripies. So let's just make some stripies. I'll just go through it in case you haven't used Inkscape. Again, it's free. Um, and maybe you don't know how to use it. So maybe I should explain what I'm doing. So this is kind of the basic tool for drawing lines and shapes. I mean, you can draw rectangles and ellipses, but most things are more exciting than just simple uh, circles and squares. So uh, yeah, I'm going to use this tool. So you click to place a point, you click and hold to drag a, a spline, I suppose. Uh, and yeah, there's definitely a sort of getting used to how it, it feels to use, but I don't think it takes too long. Let's make a little stripey like that. I'll do a couple. I think that might be a little, sorry, press space there. Space ends the uh, shape drawing as well if you do that. Um, also, when it does a little diamond shape rather than a square, that means you can tweak these individually, which usually isn't what I want. I usually want to, oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I usually want to have something like this. If you see the square one, it, it kind of keeps it a nice curve. So. You can turn, if it decided for whatever reason to make it a diamond, you can say, no, nope, I want you to be the square kind instead. Uh, and that will get you back to you know, square behavior. So I'm just going to uh, tweak this again. I don't know how to draw, but I don't have to, because this thing will, well, now you really don't have to. We've got AI. Um, but AIs aren't making SVGs yet, so that's a problem? Question mark? I don't know. All right, I'm just going to copy these and put them on the other side. Um, and maybe... So it looks like there's a little less space on the right there. Um, oh, I see a little corner peeking out. So I'll just pull that in. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect identical on both sides. I mean, it is an animal. Um, there we go. And then let's put, I'll put one on the head too. And then I was going to say, let's put some like spots as another design. But um, then I was like, I want this doodle on the head. I don't know why it's a doodle. It's a stripe. All right, so there we go. So that can be a striped appearance. And what I would think I'm going to do, let me think about this. There's a couple ways we could do this. So I could save this as a new image and say, this is the guy with a stripe. But I think, I don't know, it's hard to say. So another option, let's just say what I'm thinking in the middle of the side, right, is I could say, no, I'm going to save this and then overlay the two, the two images. Um, the advantage doing that is there are some ways where you can kind of recolor these. Like we could use some um, CSS to tint this. Um, and that would let us do interesting things, potentially. Uh, the problem is, I mean, if we look at this, if, if this was a different color, if I said, yeah, but, you know, we use some CSS to tint it red, the problem is the red is going to go outside the lines unless I'm very careful. So maybe I'll leave that up to you if you want to do something a little more clever with overlaying the images. I think I'll just save this as like this, um, we'll call him like Little Guy Tiger or something. Let's do that. Ooh, but another advantage, now that I think about it, another, oh, and I missed his tummy. Another advantage um, of overlaying them is I could have multiple. So I could also do, maybe I could also do dots. Um, oops, somehow it's not opaque. Um, right, maybe there's also a spots pattern that's separate, um, right, without the, an interesting look. But if we overlaid, we could say, ooh, a pet could have both very easily by just overlapping the images. Um, but let's, let's, I'm going to be a little, a little more simple because otherwise the video will take even longer. So I'll leave that up to you. Let's just save this as like um, little guy, tiger, 
Uh, and Inkscape likes to default to this Inkscape SVG. Inkscape SVG contains a bunch of other silly metadata. Um, it's just like extra information about like the, the canvas size, just all this other stuff. Um, the only Inkscape is going to use, but I'm just going to put this on the internet for general use. So I want to do an opt what they call an optimized SVG, which just means a basic SVG <laughs> with none of the extra silly stuff. Um, so I'm going to do that. Inkscape is perfectly capable of handling them. Um, if you really want to save bytes, uh, you can come in here and do options like remove every remove unused uh, IDs, remove metadata, remove comments. A lot of this comes default, but some of it doesn't. Um, if you're making a browser game that's going to, you know, lots of people are going to play, it's good to save bytes because bytes cost you money. Um, but I mean, honestly, the SVGs aren't that big. And so you're probably, this is probably like one of the, the lesser concerns in terms of saving bytes. There's a, the bigger gains to be gained elsewhere. But I don't know. It's, it's so easy to check the boxes. You might as well. Um, I will go ahead and put on, oh, I was going to try and put on the circles with control Y to redo, but I guess I already deleted too much. So I'll just put the circles back, um, make a different pattern. And if I'm not worried about them overlapping, I've decided I'm not going to worry about them overlapping. So I'll just do, uh, maybe I'll do, if this was his back, does it look like it was like a little different? Maybe I'll do like just a, um, and then I could do like a small. It's kind of like a, I mean, that's like, that's like a look. Uh, yeah. Thinking maybe I would only do them on that half, but I've decided against that now. Uh, okay, that's a fun look, right? <laughs> he looks cute. All right, so I'll say that's a little guy spotted. All right, little guy spotted. And I don't know why. I've noticed, I think I've noticed this. I used to have a, a laptop that had Linux on it, and the Linux version of Inkscape, I swear, remembered to do optimized SVG. But the Windows version, it never is doing it for me. I'm sorry, it keeps opening that window on the other monitor. But whatever. All right, we now have two little guys. Let's go and look. So those are, by the way, in here. We've got little guy, little guy spotted, and little guy tiger. So now my thinking is, if we breed two pets, we will do something that's like, oh, is one of them, you know, like basically choose one of, one of the graphics from the parent. Um, if it's a little guy and a little guy spotted, then there's a 50-50 chance of one of them. Something like that. Uh, so... I'm going to need to give myself another pet. I made another video, which maybe I should link to in the description, uh, where you can get more pets by having your pet say, there's like a new button that says make a friend and it costs 10 energy and it has your pet get another pet. Uh, but I don't have that in this game. So something I don't actually know because I've made all these different players. Oh, I logged in as B at B. Okay, so I'm ID number one. So I'm going to go to the pets table and give me another pet. So you can add a row. Uh, don't worry about the ID. It'll figure that out itself. Oh, and that's nice. And it previews what the name is. So then, and I will make this just for testing. I'll do a little guy, tiger, and I'll name him, um, I don't know, tidbit. That was the name of the hamster I had when I was little. Uh, and just have nothing of anything. All right. And if I re refresh here, oh, I gotta log in. That's something else I need to fix in the, in the base game. All right, so now I've got Tidbit, who's a little tiger. Now I would like to add a feature where I breed these two pets. So I think I'll just add a breed button somewhere, and the breed button will pop up a dialog that says, pick the two pets that you want to breed, and we'll just kind of list out the pets, and it'll let you select two. So let's start making that. Um, let's go to my house, and I'm not going to worry. Something else with, it, with these videos, again, I want to make a lot of little videos, adding lots of little features. I'm not going to spend a ton, a ton of time making things look nice. I'm going to have to leave that up to you because polishing up the UI to make everything look really nice, that takes a lot of time, I, at least for me. For me, the UI takes way longer than the coding. I'm sure there are artistic people who feel the total opposite. Um, but for me, I, the, the programming comes quick and the UI takes more time. So I'm going to leave it up to you to make the, the UI nice and pretty. I'm just going to slap this little breed button somewhere on the page and, and not worry too hard about it. So I'll just put it down here. Uh, maybe I'll label it. I don't know. Actions. Again, this is silly and you should do something better. Um, you may wonder why we say button type equals button. This is an HTML thing. Um, if you don't specify the type as button, it assumes that the type is submit, which has slightly different behavior. Mostly it doesn't matter, but every now and again it matters. And then your page is behaving in weird ways. And you're like, why is it doing that? 
why when I click this button does this other stuff happen? And it's because you didn't say type equals button and so it assumed it was a form submitting type button. So usually good to say type, be explicit, say type equals button if you want it to just be a generic button or if you want it to submit a form like for example in login, that's a bad example, that's somewhere else, sign up and then you say type equals submit, which is again is the default and that specifically submits the form it's inside of. But again, that's the default behavior. So if you had another button that you didn't intend to trigger the form, blah, 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 blah. blah. So I don't know, just a little, a little gotcha to be aware of. Um, so I'm pressing control W to close um, tabs. I think the default is actually control F4. Depends on your IDE. Anyway, I, I worry about doing keyboard shortcuts like that because you can see my mouse, but you can't see my keyboard. And I, you know, I know that can be disorienting when you're watching the video. So anyway, uh, let's make the button. We'll, we'll say the text is breed. And we need to attach some sort of click handler. There's this little ceremony we need to do and we'll say do breed. And actually I won't need it here. And I think the IDE will tell me that. So if, you know, it's just easier. Again, if you know, you know. If you don't know, it's just always best to start with funny symbols and then the name of your function. <laughs> and if you know C sharp, you know what that means. And if you don't know C sharp, that's just the safe default to go with. Um, yeah, and you can decide if you need it or not. So uh, anyway, let's make a do breed. I talk about this in another video, but the whole thing with like async and task is, is a bit technical. Um, when you're working on um, front end UI stuff like this, it's usually safest to go with async task. And the reason is be async means it's asynchronous work. And that's because web pages are inherently asynchronous. You don't know when someone's gonna click and you don't know even after they click, they might start moving the mouse to click something else or, or open up a, you know, maybe something's working and they're opening a drop down. They're already working ahead of you. Um, and so you really want your front end code to kind of respect the asynchronous nature of your user and make as much of your code asynchronous as possible. Um, on the back end too, but especially on the front end. And those words might not make a ton of sense. But anyway, async when possible as kind of a good default. And, and again, as you learn, if you don't know async await, um, you know, you'll figure it out as you go and then you'll start to see, okay, this is when I actually care and this is when I don't. And there's details there. Um, so, okay, we've made a uh, do breed function. I would like that to pop up a new dialogue, as mentioned. I want it to pop up a dialogue where you will make the selection. So I'm gonna need to make a new dialogue. Uh, I'll make a new razor component. And uh, I will call it select pets for breeding, sure. That sounds like a fine name. Uh, and let's look at how another alert is done, or another, sorry, another dialogue. Uh, so it looks like we've got some divs and some messages and blah, blah, blah. So this is using under the hood, pet game is using under the hood, a library called blazard.modal. Um, and it comes with a bunch of stuff. And actually you can see the name here, blazard modal instance, and blazard modal close async. Well, actually that's just because I called the variable that. But, <laughs> but anyway, it's using a library under the hood. Good news is you can go and Google that. If you are curious about the features of uh, Blazard Modal, you can look that up, like modal parameters, for example, which we're gonna use for this um, select pets for breeding thing. Well, maybe we won't. Um, but anyway, you can look those things up. Um, it's on the Blazard, Blazard Modal homepage. They have a bunch of tutorial. Uh, these are things that like, even if you knew a ton of C Sharp, you might never have used this library. So like no shame in not knowing that. Just go Google their documentation and look up how um, Blazard Modal works. Um, they'll tell you all about it. Um, something they don't do, this is just a convention I do, I like to make a function called show on every method um, just to guide kind of a common interface so that you know as, as, as a developer, no matter what dialogue you're opening, you can just name it, type dot show, and then you're good to go. And then your IDE is gonna help you fill out the rest. It's gonna say, hey, I'm expecting a title and a message. I'm expecting you to give me this modal service because I need the modal service to open modals. Um, so I'm gonna do something much like that. Uh, you know, maybe I'll just copy this whole thing and, and, and modify it. So up top, we'll say um, select two pets to breed. And then here, okay, well, uh, let's do a couple things. So we're gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need a list of all the pets. So I'll put that in a list here. Um, and we'll need to like load them and, and do all this stuff. Again, maybe, I'm trying to decide how we wanna do this um, as I talk. Maybe I should have planned harder. Um, but we'll want a button to cancel out of this as well. So we'll make a, uh, sorry, so this will really be the uh, close. Hey, remember when I said that generally you should do that little, do a little ceremony? Let's do a little ceremony. All right, we'll do cancel, and then we'll do read. Oops, cancel read. 
All right, and then we'll make a, uh, I'll call it do breed. And that will actually perform the breed on whatever the two function or the two functions, the two pets are. Um, so we're not going to need a message thing that came in for alert. So alert lets you give it a title and a message, um, and it shows the message up in here. But we're not doing any of that for this uh, breeding thing. So I'll get rid of that. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot. I'm silly. Um, they already have. Yeah, they are. So I I put this header, um, but there's already headers for our titles for dialogue. So let's select two pets to breed. Oops. Right, I'm not going to set the message, but I think what we do want to do, so we're going to click this to breed button on the home page. And from the home page, we already have a list of pets. So if you've seen some of the other videos or looked at the pet page, you know that it like you know, has to ask the database and says, hey, give me all the pets, blah, blah, blah. But we already have the pets from the home page. So there's no reason to do all that. So we'll say that when you open, when you show this dialog, I want, to, I want you to show me all the pets that I could conceivably breed. Um, I'm going to do, sorry, so that's alt enter. So we know that pet exists somewhere in the code and the IDE does too. That's why it's red, but also underlined with the straight lines. It's like, I don't, I know that you want it, but I don't have access to it here. Some fun C sharp stuff and lots of other languages, Java as well. What it wanted on top was this line, which is just added for me. So you get that by when, when you have that situation where it says, I know it exists, but technically the language requires you to do a little more. Um, this is again IDE being helpful. You can do Alt Enter, and it will pull it in for you. So it completes the code for you that you needed to write. Handy feature. Um, we are going need to need now, and this is just a bunch of stuff that you would need to look up in Blazard Modal. We need to pass the pets into the dialog, and there's a little bit of to do about that. Um, and that again, that's specific to the Blazard Modal library. Um, and by the way, if you don't like the Blazard Modal library, there might be others out there, or maybe you think you can do better and you'd like to make your own pop-up dialogue things. That's all possible. Um, I just chose to go with Blazard Modal for pet game because I know it, and it is pretty easy to use. Um, there is, you know, there's a small learning curve to any library. Uh, so anyway, let's do that. So I'm going to make um, a parameter. It's going to be a list of pet, and we'll call it pets. And here's uh, IDE being helpful again, suggesting how I might complete this. Um, and then this is just some silly stuff you have to do, again, to pass in parameters to a modal, because that's how Blizzard Modal says we have to do it. Um, OK, so this will make sure that when I open the modal, we have the pets. So now here we can list the pets. So we'll say for each pet in all of the pets. And I'm going to list them. We really want you to select two. So I guess it has to be checkboxes, but we only want you to select two. You shouldn't be able to select fewer you know, or more. Um, well, let's go ahead and do that. So let's make a table, arguable whether or not this is a good use of a table, um, but I'm going to do it. Oops. Um, and I will make the first column be, whoops, sorry. Uh, first column, I'll do the checkbox in. So we can say input type tools checkbox. Uh, and actually, I shouldn't do it that way. There's an input checkbox, and this is a thing given to you by Blazor that makes it even easier to um, use checkboxes. And actually, I might have to remind myself and look at the documentation, because checkboxes surprisingly don't come up that often, I feel like, at least in the sorts of websites I make. They do, but just not that often. Um, sorry, and that should actually go in the first TR is a row. Um, that's the first cell in the row. Then I would do um, an image of the pet, so we can say, uh, the, the images, pets, and then this would be the pet image. And you might not know this, so let me remind. If we look at the pets here, the image is just the name of the file, but it doesn't include the .svg extension, so I need to put that on. Uh, and then let's do the pet's name. And after I've done this, we'll check it out and see that it, at least this works um, and, and looks like something. So. Uh, it's not going to let me uh, build the code. I mean, if we try, it's going to complain that do breed here is not defined. I just kind of want to prove that that's true. So here we go. Nope, not defined. So we need to make that. So we'll make our um, do breed function. Um, what's this other thing it's complaining about? It should be public. Yes, it should. Um, the default for things is to be private. And if they need to be public, then you have to say so. Uh, it's 
also good again when, whenever there's defaults it's usually good to be explicit and, and write the you know not rely on the default behavior because that can be um you know you don't always know just by looking what every single default is for everything all the time all right let's get the read looks like that didn't work and i know why because if we go back to my house i didn't actually hook up anything to happen so we need to say select pets for breeding show and then here again, the ID is going to be useful. It says, well, you have to give me a modal service. I don't remember if we have one. We do. Here's a modal service called modals. And then it says, you've got to give me a list of pets. And I do have a list of pets here. It's called my pets. Ooh, why isn't it like that? Oh, because, so this is what I was kind of talking about before, the asynchronous nature of things. It takes time for the pets to get loaded into the game. It's possible someone hits the page, the pets haven't loaded yet, but they're already clicking breed, and we haven't even loaded up the pets. Um, so it does so happen that out here we said, well, we're going to check if my pets is null, sh show loading. Else, if it's not null, I'm going to show you the breed button. Um, but the code doesn't really know that. It knows that up there, but doesn't know that in here, right? In theory, we could call do breed anywhere. Um, so we need to check again. There's a couple solutions. I'm going to choose to check again. So I'm going to say if my pets is null, then we're just going to get out of here. So if you click it too early, just abort. Um, and that'll do. So let's rerun. Actually, I think I was having trouble with this in another video, and I think I know why. But there's an apply changes that I can use to not have to reload the page, and I think it would have worked. So let's go to read. We got an error. Wonderful. Um, let me see what the error is. Uh, object of type alert. Uh, sorry. Does not have a property matching name pets. Aha, so I copy pasted this code and I was a dang fool and maybe you caught this um, and I said show the alert modal, but this is the select pets for breeding modal. So I need to say select pets for breeding. And let's see if I can apply changes and have it work. Oh, reload. Okay. I think because I, uh, because it threw an exception there, that wasn't going to work. Still got issues. All right, what do we got now? Do, 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 do not access a disposed object. It's interesting. I wonder what it thinks was disposed. Does it tell me what line that happened on? Let me pause and figure this out and I'll be right back. I'm back. Um, okay, the problem is, is that I'm using input checkbox. It, it, sometimes it's exciting to parse through these exceptions and see what's actually complaining about. But here it is. Uh, the input checkbox requires that I give it something that it can actually use. And I haven't done that yet. So let's take that out. Um, and let's see if apply changes will work this time. Maybe the problem was I had that other issue. Nah, it's just not. It's just not. Um, let's rerun. That's a, a feature. That hot reload feature is something that, um, I don't know, like Microsoft, at first it didn't work at all. And then it worked. But some IDs it worked in and others it didn't. And blah, 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 blah. It's been all over the place. All right. So now I have the two pets. And you know, if I had 50, I would just list them all. But I want my little checkboxes next to them to select the two uh, that I will breed. So let's do that. Um, good to see that works. This shouldn't do anything. Great. Uh, yes, let's hook up the checkboxes. Um, I'm remembering, though, I cheated and paused there and was playing with it. And I remember why checkboxes are kind of a pain. So Blazor is expecting, and this is a reasonable assumption, um, that a checkbox is just a single value that's either yes or no. But we want to build up a list. We want like a list of selected pets, not just a simple yes it's set or no it's not set. Um, so there's a number of ways to do this. I think what I'm going to do is a, it's a little cheaty. It's not very good for accessibility, and I do want to keep accessibility in mind. So. Anytime you, you use, like, so my thought was I could just use a button, and when you click the button, we'll bind it to some code that says add or remove this pet to the list. The problem with doing it that way um, is that when you, someone with a screen reader comes in, or even just using keyboard nav, right, that's not what you expect a button to do. And, and, and same with the browser. The browser might give you, you know, maybe um, space and enter both work for checkboxes, but, but not for buttons or things like that. So anytime you use one element in HTML for, not its intended purpose. You can get all kinds of weird behavior. Um, the key, for people who like using keyboards, it doesn't work. Maybe they use keyboard because they have to, because they don't have the dexterity for a mouse, um, shaking hands, or, you know, again, maybe they're blind and using screen readers. So 
And there's a lot of reasons uh, to really use the HTML elements as, as intended. Um, so let's hook up. There are ways around it. It just requires a little more work. It's a pain in the ass. And I don't know, I've never found a front end framework that makes this really easy because I feel like a lot of the times you do want select multiple, right? Like I'm checking off all the things I want. That means we need to store things in a list. But I, I haven't found things that make that really easy. Uh, Angular is the other thing I've had a lot of experience with. Um, they definitely don't make it any easier. I know there was another thing I tried. Maybe it was uh, Svelte, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, it seems like this is always a, a weird thing. So um, I'm gonna pass, we're gonna have to do some work and this gets weird and technical. I don't like it and I wish they just made this stuff easier. Maybe what I should do, something I might build on as a base um, to pet game is just something that makes that easy because it's something, again, I feel like it's a really common thing. But okay, what do we want? We want to know um, the list of pets that are selected. So let's make that list. So we'll have a public list of pet and we're gonna call it selected pets. Um, and it's gonna start off as just an empty list. And then let's just do a normal old checkbox since the, again, as I mentioned before, Blazor offers this checkbox input that gives you all these fun extra features, but we're not gonna use any of them because it doesn't do what we want. So we're just gonna use a normal old HTML checklist or checkbox. Um, so let's do that. <laughs> Uh, and when you click it, we will toggle the pet. So we'll say um, toggle pet. Let's just say that. We'll make a new function that toggles whether or not this pet is selected. And then this guy is checked if, and we're gonna need a little bit of logic here. So we should have this checkbox checked if the selected pets contains the pet that we're currently thinking about. Also, I think we don't want on click, but do we want on change? Is it gonna have that for me? That's the real HTML event. And how do you know these things? Again, if I'm doing this, you're like, whoa, what, where's been coming up with like on change and, and things? This is the, like, this is even Blazor. This goes back to HTML JavaScript, which Blazor is all on top. It's doing JavaScript under the hood. We're just not seeing it. Um, so we're tapping into the native browser JavaScript functions and on change is one of them. Um, and most input elements, maybe all of them, uh, have an, a change event that says it has been changed. The user has changed this, this input. They've typed in text if the input is of type text, or they've toggled the checkbox if the input of it is of type um, checkbox. So when they change it, we want to toggle the pet, and it's going to be checked if they are. Yeah, we're, we're kind of doing both. Sorry. So... Yeah, this is where we just get into weird town. Again, things really want to be tied to just a Boolean. So we might actually do click because we're kind of overriding because we're saying, so again, if you wanted to use on change, you're relying on the user clicked. And so they have controlled whether or not it's checked, but we want to control whether or not it's checked through code. So we're really overriding the default behavior, which I was just talking about is a little dangerous to do. This might have some funny side effects. I think this, in this case, we're pretty safe, um, but it, you might know better. Um, so anyway, let's toggle that way and see what we get. So I'm gonna make this new toggle pet function that takes a pet, so let's make it. Um, and I'm not gonna make this one async uh, because I know it's gonna go real, real fast, uh, like faster than a human can blink, let alone move to a new thing. Um, so we're gonna say if the selected pets contains the pet, then we're going to remove the pet from the selection, else uh, we're going to add it. Um, interesting that, I don't know if you saw that, so GitHub Copilot was suggesting some things that were very, that was very interesting. Um, they were suggesting that we check account, which is kind of what we want to do, right? We were saying we only want to select, let you select um, two pets. So I think that's what it was saying. So if selected pets count, is less than to let you add it. Um, and it actually looked like it was gonna do something else. It was saying, if select a pet equals two, then remove the first one you selected. That's an interesting suggestion too. And the, the AI stuff is really fun. So what GitHub Copilot is suggesting, which is really cool, is they're saying, okay, if you're adding a new pet, but you've already selected two, let's just unselect whatever the very first one they checked was, right? So you could like, if you started from the top and just went down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and clicked every single one, only the most recent two would ever be checked. 
that's pretty clever. I mean, I think that might be a better UI than I was going to do. So let's go with GitHub Copilot's uh, suggestion there. Um, and it was called Toggle Pet. Sorry. So another hint from the IDE. It's dark gray, meaning you're never using this. And I was like, well, I shouldn't be using it. I wrote it up there. I wrote Toggle Pet. Now it knows I'm using it. And if you if you're not if you haven't used an IDE a lot, it's good to get familiar with with those kinds of things because the IDE is trying to tell you a lot. Um, all right, let's see that this works properly. Um, I'm going to run the program. We're at 30 minutes just to make UI. I told you UI takes forever. <laughs> um, all right. Um, all right. I would like to breed. Check check. It's too bad they don't have multiple pets. I mean, I could, you know, let's hack another one in just to test it. So let's make, um, insert a new row. Oh, that's not where I was going to put it, but sure. Um, this can just be a little guy as well. Um, and I'll call it uh, 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 Jake. I have a friend who had a cat named Jake, so we'll name it Jake. All right, let's reload. Again, I need to fix that. Um, it shouldn't be logging you off when you reload. That's something you just have to fix. All right, breed. Click, click, click. Yeah, perfect. Um, so it always unselects whatever the last one was. But if we... yeah, all right, so we can select exactly two pets. That's wonderful. Um, something else that might be good to do is to not let them click breed if they haven't selected exactly two. Um, so there is a built-in way in HTML to disable something. It's the disabled property. So we'll say this is disabled if. And now we need to go back to code. So we do the app thing. If selected pets um, count is not two. Um, let me see if apply changes will work here. That would be great. Um, it's hard to tell because it might be that this, um, let, let me try something else. I might be able to fix this. So we want to say if a button um, is disabled, or a button is disabled, then the background color should be, let's make it like light gray. Let's see if that works. I'm going to have to do a refresh for this. I have to log in because I haven't fixed that bug yet in the base game. All right, read. It's possible that just isn't working. The, uh, curious to see if it has the disabled attribute on it. Hmm. Did I not? Uh, oh, well, didn't I rely on apply changes? And again, maybe that's just not working. So let me try one more time. Three. There we go. All right. So only one I've selected is exactly two. Otherwise, it's not going to let me click. I mean, it doesn't do anything yet anyway. So let's finally implement the freaking breed fun uh, feature after all that work. All right. <laughs> so assuming you're allowed to click breed. We're going to select the two pets and we're going to give you a new one. Um, and we want it to pick one of the graphics randomly of the parent. And I think I'd like to add a small chance that you get a totally different one, right? That you get something outside the, the normal appearance. So let's do all of that. So we'll get the appearance of the two parents. So let's do just like, um, well, let's not do that. Let's do this instead. We want Let's say a random number from one to 100. We'll make it percents because that's easy to think about. So um, that's fun. Uh, percent. And we'll just get a random. And this is just some normal C sharp stuff. So we'll get a random number. Uh, this is actually a random number from 0 to 99 because random number generators like to do that. If you want it to be 1 to 100, you can do the plus 1. Um, but I'll stick to uh, 0 to 99. It kind of works out with how we're doing the math. So here's my thinking. We'll do a 40% chance that we pick um, the first pet's appearance, a 40% chance of the second pet's appearance, and then the rest of the time will just be a completely random thing. Um, this is really interesting. What uh, So interesting, yeah, this wants to do something kind of like that, although um, GitHub Copilot doesn't really understand what our pet structure looks like, and it's suggesting all this other wacky stuff, but it, you know, it's kind of getting the idea here. Um, but that's not exactly what we want. So we will say... Um, if the percent is less than 40, um, and this is why I was saying it's kind of handy that goes 0 to 99, because in our brains, this is 40%. And if we say less than 40, that's 0 through 39, which is going to be 40 of the 100. So we can just use less thans all the time 
and the fact that it was zero to um, 99 works. Uh, if you wanted to do one to 100, because that just makes more sense in your brain, then we want to say less than or equal to 40. So I guess it really doesn't matter either way. Um, I'm going to go, I don't know, this is kind of the more programmery way to do it. That's not really a good reason. You should do what is most, I don't know, clearly expressed to, to, to a human looking at it. Um, I guess I would argue that this is never going to look great as I'm writing it. Maybe there's a, a different way you would write this code to make it even more super duper clear. Um, so uh, anyway, we want a string to hold the image. So in this case, we're going to use the selected pet, um, the zeroth one. So again, computers seem to like counting from zero a lot of the time. So of our selected pets, zero is the first one. That's why we, I didn't call it out at the time, but remove at zero. That's removing the first thing in the, in the list. Um, we're going to say else if the percent is less than 80, right? That, so if it's less than 40, that's the zero to 39. We're going to do this. Okay, but if it's not less than 40, what if it's less than 80? Then that's going to be your 40 through 79. And that's going to be, and this is why I was saying it's not really clear no matter what we do. Um, else we want to pick a totally random one. Um, from the list of three available images, right? I've got the uh, spotted, got little guy, little guy tiger, and little guy spotted. Um, we want one of those at random. So here's a way we can do that. We can do next up to three, and we can use a fun C sharp switch statement. So we will have this is a uh, little guy. I don't know why I decided to do that. With the, right. Uh, this would be little guy. Tiger, I believe I called it, and then this would be little guy spotted. All right, and this is just another way to kind of act on random numbers. And I could have done the same thing for this. I could have done, um, because you can do like greater than zero and less than 40, right? I could have done that for the percents up there. Um, so there's a lot of ways to, to write this stuff. So maybe it's good that we're showing off two different ways. All right, so this is our logic for selecting one of the two um, pictures. What does it say about image here? Only assigned but never used. Right, it's telling us we're not using it. Don't worry, we're gonna. So let's make a new pet. We'll call it Baby. Baby is a new pet. Um, and it definitely requires a couple properties. Which one's required? It needs an image and a name. Okay, so we have the image. Uh, we have the name. I'm just gonna call it Baby. Um, <laughs> there might be another thing you would want to call it. Maybe you have a random name generation thing, right? You can imagine pulling random names out some sort of list. Um, something else that's not requiring, so before I put this, um, before I had put in name, it was like squiggly run underline, I'm not even gonna let you run this code because you haven't assigned all the properties I need like name. Um, something else that I do probably want though is an owner. I decided in pet game that owner wouldn't be required because maybe you'd, you might have some pool of pets that no one owns but maybe could adopt from or something like that. I don't know. So I just left it as, as optional. You don't have to specify an owner. Um, and so the game is saying, sure, I'll let you run without specifying an owner. We probably do want to specify an owner. Um, so we'll say that the owner ID equals, it doesn't matter, these should both be your pets. So either one of them, we'll just pick the first. And this is our new baby. Uh, now we have to save it in the database and we're almost done. This video longer than I thought, maybe I can do this in two minutes, it'll be a 40 minute video, maybe not. So we need to get asked to the database the way we do that. In Razor, you have to inject a service. I've talked about this in other videos, but we need to get the uh, pet game database, and I'll just call it database. And then you have to do a little silliness here. Um, Copilot is just a default, default null. They're both acceptable. Um, I think people do prefer default. Uh, that's probably why Copilot is suggesting it. It doesn't really matter. They mean the same thing in that context. Um, so we will say database, and we will add the baby. And then we will database save changes. Um, this, is, this is, yeah, it's going to suggest that I do it asynchronously, which is good. Again, we should. And the final thing we're going to need to do, so we'll have added the pet. It'll make a new baby, but nothing is going to tell your house page that it should reload. Um, maybe I will leave that as an exercise to the, you, the viewer, and that's how we'll cheat and get this done in only slightly over 40 minutes. So let's just do that. And after we've done that, I'm going to close the dialogue because I can do that. Um, so I do have 
the modal instance. This is a, a reference to the particular modal. We copy pasted that out of alert, if you recall, and we copied that forever ago. So we're gonna, because it's async, we should wait. Okay, and let's reload. And now we should be able to make babies. How exciting. Um, close this one, let's log in. So I'm gonna breed Tidbit and Jake. And again, it's not gonna reload here. You're gonna have to reload yourself, um, which is a little unfortunate because as we've noticed, as I've called out, uh, there's a bug that makes it when you reload, you get logged out. All right, it made a baby. Um, it would be cool to see. I mean, we should, like, let's do Roy and Jake. We should really expect, again, there's a 20% chance. Maybe we'll get something else, but we're probably gonna get a plain one. Um, I'm gonna reload and it's gonna log me out, sorry. All right, and we did get a plain baby. It makes sense. Um, you'll just have to trust that the random number generators are working. And, and that is, that's a thing that comes up in games. It is annoying to test random numbers because the way to test it is to do it a lot of times. Um, you can write unit tests if you if you want to help with that. And there's some other things you have to do the code. Uh, one hint I will leave you with before we go, because you probably want this page to reload after you have done a breed. Um, read the Blazard modals uh, documentation. There is a way here that we could turn this function into something that would return, we could say return true when they did choose to breed, return false when they didn't, and then out in my house where we call it, we would say, you know, if bread, uh, and then we could say, oh, well, let's just say bread, and then we would say if bread, then we would load the pets. And um, don't remember if there's a function down here that just loads all the pets. Maybe it's up here. So this is the thing that loads the pets. So you could say, if they bred, then load the pets. So this would be how I would recommend um, making it so that when the dialogue is closed, if they bred, you do. But there's a little extra hookup you have to do to like make this actually work. Like you'll see there's squiggly red underlines here. There's some other squiggly red underlines here. There's some other stuff you have to do. Um, I'm also remembering that I used the database uh, slightly improperly in here, but it's almost certainly okay. There's some things I should do to make that harder uh, to mess up in the future. So anyway, there we go. We made a breeding system. I'm sorry it took so long. Most of it, again, it was the, the UI, like the actual act of like this, this was the breeding logic, right? Didn't take long. Random numbers, make a new pet, put it in the database, you're done. But all the like, oh, we got to select one of the two. We have to open a dialogue. When the dialogue closes, we want to reload the house. That's the stuff that really feels to me like that. That's where all the time goes is, is making the UI really nice. Oh, there's my, there's a real pet. Hi, Mia. There's my real pet. So um, anyway, ta-da, we finally did it. Um, hope this was interesting. If you are looking to add other things to pet game, I have made two other videos and I'm hoping to make many more. And if you have suggestions on things you would like in pet game, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to make more of these little videos. Hopefully they won't be 40 minutes. But I, I do want, I mean, I could edit these down a lot, but I think seeing all the steps, especially if you don't know programming is very helpful and especially the debugging. I mean, debugging is a thing that's gonna come up and you wanna know where am I looking for errors? You know, what's important, all those kinds of things. So I'm, I don't know, it kind of, it's kind of a win-win for me. I don't have to edit, I get to be lazy, but, but I do think it's valuable to see where things go wrong because things go wrong all the time. There's so much time spent Googling, and which we didn't do today in this video, um, but those things happen, so. Um, and I did pause earlier, maybe that was cheating and I shouldn't have done that. So anyway, thanks again for watching and goodbye.